Hello, Mr. Baker. This is Councilman Allworth. with a question for you. How current are your ICC certifications? Actually, my ICC certifications went inactive. I'm working on them right now. I've got, I need 1.5 more CEU to, to make activate them. Um, and the reason why they went inactive was Google California shut down all Calvo and the contract company I work for, um, we weren't going to Calvo anymore to get our CEUs. So I've been working on them diligently and um, I have no problem in activating them within the next week or two. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Baker. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. We'll close item three and go on to item four, Mary Roberts, and discussion for possible actions. Appointment of individual from interviewed applicants as city building official and determination of salary. Um, I, I'd like to note just a couple things before we get into this item. Uh, this city official position is a little bit different than the others. In that the mayor does not make uh, an appointment. He works directly um, under a motion and acceptance from the council. Um, also, there was another applicant that came in a little bit later. It, he is on, on the Zoom, but... Sure. Um, he, he would have to still be yes. interviewed at the next meeting if the council wants to do that. Yeah. Um, but but both, I, both both courses of action are open. You can choose from some of the nine, or you can hold off um, for two weeks and see the other person. I, I'm very pleased with the quality of the applicants that we got um, in this first round. And, um, I, I'm just pleased we got such qualified people to apply. I have one question on the person that came in, I don't know if he laid it off, was there a deadline he had to meet when you posted it? With the way things they go, we post everything basically open to Bill. And he did, I have spoke to him well, by email, he would have to be camping and was out of cell service to be able to send it. But they're all posted open and public. Okay. They're all posted just position open and yes, public. Yes, I've done that. Thank you. So what's the pleasure? What's the pleasure of the council? If I might make just a, 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 a recommendation from um, just out in left field. Housing is always an issue with our applicants to have someone who's already um, a property owner in the area and, and, and knows the area and, and knows the housing issue. I think is definitely a bonus, not to take anything away from the qualifications um, of the other candidate. But um, as the council is aware, we we offered the job uh, once or twice before and had someone come up here and decide they just can't find housing, which leads us back at square one. So. Uh, the council knows my feelings are always uh, based on whoever's got property and somewhere to be here. Is that the floor that is open? Yes. Uh, I'd like just comment. <clears throat> I actually am. Um, the, the last go around on this, we have some really qualified building inspectors who opted not to take the position. Uh, I gotta tell you, I'm really pleased with what we see here tonight. I like the answers, uh, all of them. Uh, I don't know if uh, if we need to wait another meeting for the other candidate uh, or take the decision here right now. I could, I think if we could uh, come to some type of agreement, and especially when we're talking about salary, it is going to be tough to get housing here for a while. We know that, but I'm well pleased with. Everything I've read about these two gentlemen and, and what they have spoken with and answered your questions tonight, so I'd, I'd be ready to move forward. And I, I would recommend, if at all possible, if the council likes uh, one of these candidates, that we do move forward based on the time constraints we're under. I would not before as a, this kind of an application call recommendations on these two individuals we referred to tonight, and. Uh, that type of quality is what caused kind of hard to find. And I think it's wonderful that we have two that have applied, and I think uh, a decision could be made. What, well, I think one question that should have been asked, which wasn't, 
when could they start? I was just going to say. <laughs> We're sort of in a jam right now. We are in a jam right now, and I, I have no problem asking the candidates. Mr. Becker, do you have a you could start by date? Actually, I put on my application uh, within two to four weeks. Of course, I have to do due diligence in my other jurisdiction. I need to find a place to live because I don't have a house on my property yet. So I would have to find some housing. And matter of fact, we're going to be back up in two more weeks. Uh, we just came up from the rodeo. We came up from the London rodeo. We love the small town feel. We're actually coming up again at the end of the month. And we're going to go to uh, Elko to go look at some manufactured houses. and see how quick we can get something on the property or purchase a trailer or, you know, I'm talking, we're going to meet with my real estate agent that we bought the property from to see what's available for rental. But, you know, I would like to, you know, start as soon as I could because I know you're in a bind and there's nothing holding me there. I just need to give proper due notice. I would do that with all my employers. So I have a question for you, sir. Yes. You mentioned you, you stayed at the KOA. Do you have a camp trailer or are you still No, I don't. Actually, I'm in, the, in one of the new lodges okay. that's out front. We're check, I'm checking it out for when we come back in two weeks. So I do not have a, a trailer because where I live, it's pretty <coughs> convoluted, let's say. There's no place to put a trailer. Our, our, house, yeah, our houses are pretty tight together. Uh, I've been there since 96 and I've just never needed one. but. Again, I don't have septic or power on my lot yet. I've met with Jake from Mount Wheeler talking about the uh, power. I've talked with John Little Flaherty for doing the septic and water and sewer on the lot next door. I talked to Mr. Gary Sprouse. So it's just a matter of getting that on the property. Everything's right next door to the lot that I'm on that I purchased. So it's just getting that all together. And if I need to get a <laughs> on that property, it's in the CC and R is not allowed to do so. I would just need power and water. Okay. Same question for Mr. Oh, did you have question? Same, question. Same question for Mr. Baker. Uh, when is the soonest you could start? I would believe my, my, my last answer would be 30 days because I do follow the jurisdiction that I'm working for sometime to get another building inspector over there. I've worked at this jurisdiction for a few years and I'm kind of like, um, I'm a numbers guy, so if there's a problem with an address or a question with an address, sometimes they say, ask John, they give me the address, and I go, yeah, that's perfect number, blah, 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 and they're like, how do you remember all that? Kind of like radar on MASH. So um, I would have to give you 30 days. Okay. 30 days.
have one more uh, request that I forgot to make earlier and one mention. Uh, if you look at my resume, you'll notice that I sit on the board of directors for IAMO, which is the International Association of Plumbing and Mechanical Officials, which write the Uniform Plumbing Code and the Uniform Mechanical Code, which we are currently adopting here. Same code that we're on in, in Henderson. My commitment with the board, since we oversee all of our operations in the world, actually, um, there are times that I need time off, and I talk to HR. There may be time where I need to take that's usually between four weeks and possibly five weeks a year off, which I would be willing to take without pay to obligation to make my obligations with them. Um, there is the traveling involved, which they cover. So uh, my jurisdiction co currently covers two weeks. I don't uh, cover the rest with my vacation, so I'm not worried about it. But I would like to request that time off if that's possible. I do have the dates that are put out several years in advance. One of them would be the first, I think it's the third week of November. I have one in January, one in July, and then we have one in September, and then back in November again. So they're not consecutive weeks? No, they're not consecutive. It would be five, five on the code cycle years because we have to vote, vote on the new code. So the 2024 is coming out. So I actually sit on the technical committee for the uh, adoption of the new codes, which will be next year. And then I sit on seven other committees, which are one or two dayers. But the board of directors does meet, and we do uh, don't have a conference. So I would just request that time off. And, and if the jurisdiction would find it in the budget to pay for one or two, that would be great. If not, I'll take them on my own time. If that's possible that I could get that leave, then yes, I would be willing to accept that offer. I think uh, the time during the winter is slow here for inspection. You, know, you can't build when it's clear to below zero. And I like your idea with Councilman Spear question you, if you're absent, the camera, the video would cover it. I, I would see a problem with that. Because that's important, it's been a lot of years that we need to continue on. It's important to me. It took me 16 years to get on the board of directors and re oversee you know, all of our listing. I sit on the listing um, our committee. I'm also chair of the plumbing workshop committee. We actually do what we call EDUCODE, which is a week-long educational uh, training that we do over in Las Vegas. So you can get CEUs for any of your certifications, ICC or our ATMO. I also teach the class for the plumbing mechanical. I also proctor the exams for the uh, NITC, for the plumbing, journeyman plumber, plumber's test for the state of Nevada. So I work with them both on that. So there's, it's very important for me to be a part of that committee. It took me a long time to get there. And I'm getting ready to serve, be up for my second, third year term. So, so seventy seventy five thousand dollars is acceptable. Absolutely, it would be a great start. Um, I think that's a great asset that you stay on those things. It, it, it is to me. It, yeah. It's uh, you know, it's very important. And it, we're all on the same codes. I mean, we're basically codified in the state of Nevada to adopt the Uniform Plumbing Code, anyways. And it's just. To me, what we do across the, the world is similar to ICC. We do our listing certifications just like everything else. And we have several offices. Our code body is probably a little bit bigger than theirs based on what we have across the world. But we do listing in Australia, China, Indonesia. We do training. We have the code books for all of those areas. So that's something that's important. And if I didn't work for a jurisdiction or didn't get the time to travel, they would drop me from the board of directors. They don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. No doubt. I don't. I don't want to see that. That's funny. So we have an acceptance from Mr. Becker. We have a motion from Councilman Allworth. We have a second, second from Councilman Spear. Is there any further discussion from the board? Or any other any questions? Okay. I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Welcome, board, Mr. Becker. Thank you, Mayor. And Council. Two two weeks. I'll get my notice when I get <laughs> back on Monday. Okay. And mind you, I'll be back in a couple of weeks, anyways. We're we're going to be staying at the KOA and we're going to go to the Delta and go look for that. But in the meantime, tomorrow, I'm staying tomorrow, I'm going home Saturday. So I'm going to meet with my agent to see what we have for local uh, rentals that are available because I know they're not highly broadcast. So. And we'll, you'll be in touch with our, our HR director, Fast, and make sure we get you in contact with Brad and all the other information you need. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. <coughs> I'd like to thank Mr. John Baker for applying on. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us here.
Uh, with that, we'll move on to item 5, Council and Spirit Council and all discussion only update from the Porter Group representatives regarding their efforts on behalf of the City of Eagle. I believe we have a uh, Congressman Porter on the line. Uh, just I'd like to introduce Congressman Porter from the Porter Group. Uh, we met with him Monday. Uh, it was really a great meeting. They found some stuff for our, for our daycare, but uh, we got some good news tonight. But anyway, Congressman Porter, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me okay? So I need to introduce you to all of the council. I'll let the, I'll the mayor do that. <laughs> uh, Congressman Porter, if you could just make sure you speak loud and clearly, uh, as close into your mic as you can. That'll Make sure you're all heard in the room here. But um, Congressman Porter uh, has, has served the state of Nevada in a, a variety of capacities, and he's been working with us on the Porter Group uh, since we hired the Porter Group. And he's been a great asset. We appreciate him taking the time to present here tonight. So, with that, Congressman Porter, whatever you have for us, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. And my name is John Porter. It's an honor to be with us this, this evening. The, the council and the staff, and if Mark is still there, or Carl Marsh, Madam Herbert, I appreciate it seeing them at uh, services for our good friend General Herbert uh, uh, a week or so ago. Uh, it was great to see, see you guys. Um, as you know, we've had a tragic loss on our team, but General Herbert uh, uh, served with you know, dignity and respect and thoughtfulness. Uh, a two star general, 20 plus years serving Nevada, you know, from uh, probably not a project. And working with the Porter Group that he didn't touch, and so it's been a very tragic loss. So, uh, thank you for your understanding, and again, thank you, Mark and Carl, for being able to attend the service. Uh, a little closer to home, Mayor, I probably could not qualify for your building official. I've had many speeding tickets uh, in the neighborhood, <laughs> I can tell you, almost to the minute. <laughs> time. Uh, I have been visiting your wonderful community for. 40 years, so I uh, I know we don't have time this evening for me to tell stories, but I can remember, I, we stayed at the KOA so many times with my son, uh, whether we were in a tent or a camp or in the back of a pickup, we've been stuck on the side of the mountain. We, we were telling Mark and Carl about it the other day, uh, Chris, my son, and I, on our way to Cape Lake, my truck broke down, uh, so I spent time. Uh, I know 101, uh, section 101 and 102, I've spent many a year freezing on the side of the mountain, you know, during uh, gear season. I have not had a lot of luck lately uh, uh, to, to draw a tag, but uh, very near and dear to my heart. So when, when we when we sit down and talk about uh, the community of Ely and the families of Ely, it's with great passion and great respect. And, and as a matter of fact, uh, one of my memorable experience, I was sworn in as uh, president of the Nevada League of Cities. I was writing my speech in the jailhouse at motel, uh, hotel. Uh, I, I, was, I still remember being scared to death because I had to give a speech in, in front of my colleagues in, in the, in the city. So please know that there's a depth of, of caring and understanding. And I'd love to come back to fire and ice, maybe, if uh, we're able to deal with COVID, but my goal is next time I, I can come to one of your meetings in person and be able to share the hospitality. <coughs> as Mayor mentioned, uh, I have 10 years on the Boulder City Council, and I, I, I have to tell you the truth, I sit listening tonight, and I'm ready to even say yay or nay, if I, I've done this the better part of my life, and I will tell you that the City Council, and I was Mayor, uh, part of that 10 years, it's the most difficult job in my, in my career of public service, so I, I admire you, but it also was the most rewarding. So, a couple of quick things uh, uh, that th those that don't know is the supporter team. Uh, there's 10 of us, we're very bipartisan. Our job is to make it work whoever's in office, whether it's a Democrat or Republican. We know it's cyclical, we know that, that things change. It looks like, uh, it, it, at least from an environmental perspective, Republicans may well take control back of the House of Representatives next year. We just know we're very conscious of that and we work closely with the Nevada delegation, but also Nevada is strong and mighty. We still have a small delegation, so we reach out to national leaders on your behalf all over the country. One other thing I'd like to address, and then I'll get into more specifics, 
Uh, you're on the phone tonight. I think you have met Cameron Gresh, who is a rock star uh, of our team. Cameron is um, an Abaddon uh, you know, through and through. You and our graduates, uh, we, we did our best to, to uh, keep Cameron when he went back to college, but he's been a solid part of our team. I think uh, some of you may have met Rachel. Uh, Rachel's on the phone as well. She, we stole Rachel from our Vanity's office, and also uh, Mark still talks to me almost daily. And uh, Stephanie Walker is with us, who also was with uh, uh, Kind of Amity. So we have a, a depth of, of knowledge, uh, but a team that's passionate. And one thing that we try to do, Mayor and Council, is that we work on our projects collectively. So whether uh, General Herbert or Cameron uh, were, were on some of the calls before, our whole team works collectively on projects. And, and uh, the bulk of us are Nevada uh, you know, based, and I'm sorry, uh, Nevada grown and Nevada uh, influenced. Um, but some companies, you may get one person, you may have a larger firm. Uh, we're not huge, but we don't plan to be. But I just want to assure you that we work on everything together as a team. Uh, and Mayor, it's good to see you monthly on the calls with the League of Cities. We work closely with uh, Westlake. We are, in, again, passionate to, to serve the community of Nevada, but certainly we're working with the League of Cities. Uh, you know, I remember for shot by Etcheverry, I shot by Etcheverry, I can go on and on about telling tell you how old I am, but uh, we're going to see some changes next year on the League of Cities. You know, uh, you know currently, uh, Council Mondaer from Sparks is the president, and next year it shifts to Southern Nevada. But I want you to know we're, your, we're champion for you with the League of Cities as well, and we'll continue to. So, uh, I guess cut to the chase. What the heck have we been doing to help the community? Uh, I, I want you to know that uh, you know, I'm as conservative as I can be, but when we saw the advent of the earmarks coming back, uh, I, I'm pleased to say that uh, with your direction um, from the council, uh, that we have been very active on, on your behalf. Uh, and Senator Masto, uh, Gorgeous Masto, and Senator Rosen, and, and I know Senator uh, Masto was just there recently visiting, but they have submitted uh, under the community-based project, otherwise known as your own, uh, requests of the Lower East uh, the water line upgrade project for about $3 million. Uh, Central Ely sewer upgrade project of three plus three million some dollars. And downtown upgrade project of 26 million. <coughs> and I, I, I must tell you that uh, on behalf of General Herbert, for, for us to solve, and Cameron, uh, explain to me uh, how, how well BJ has done you know, working you know, with uh, the, the Nevada delegation. We've had staff from the senator's office say, you know, uh, Mr. Allenberg is one of the, the better presentations that have been made. Uh, they, the senator's office uh, do believe in your projects, uh, and a good share of that is certainly uh, Mayor to you, Council, and your staff, and BJ. Uh, but we're really excited about that. We continue to have meetings you know, with the Nevada delegation and certainly as we move into 22, more national leaders that are, are, are part of the process. Um, we're looking forward to you know, the next, some of the next stages of uh, the appropriation bill passing, hopefully sometime in the next few weeks. Uh, looking for federal child care funding under the American Rescue Plan is a top priority for us in now moving into the next year. And also to work with the Economic Development Administration uh, but, but a few other things, and I'll open it up for questions, but uh, know that uh, the process is, is very unique today uh, because of the logistical issues. Uh, we're here on Capitol Hill, you know, we're literally across the street, uh, but uh, in, access is limited right now. But I'll, I will tell you, too, the person in the Nevada delegation has really stepped up uh, with their technology using Zoom, although not perfect, and by the way, this backdrop is important. This Cameron came up with this idea, and it's the first time we've used it, so speaking of technology, this is all pretty new to us as well. But uh, we we do believe that part of the political process, and it's 
voters working on the city council. And, and again, I, 10 years of sitting in, in, in your chairs and listening and, and, and uh, supporting the community, we know that this is an evolving process. And you are at the table right now with, with our top leaders uh, in Nevada and, and, and that represent us in Washington, D.C. There's not a day that goes by that we don't work with the Nevada delegation on your behalf. And we look forward to continuing and to, you know, to many more projects in the head. I guess the last thing is I yeah, would love to come visit uh, and spend some time. And it's been a little while because of COVID. But uh, I have very fond memories uh, and will always uh, think highly of your community and everyone that lives there. And we're available at almost any hour. You know, I'm a public servant. I've been, you know, in office 25 years. And, you know, if you need us, we're there. And you have the whole team at your disposal. So, Mayor, thank you. I'm honored to, to speak. And uh, I look forward to being there in person. organization has done an incredible job. You know, I've been meeting with them uh, to begin with every Monday now, every other Monday, which, uh, which is really making it easy. But I can I can tell you their due diligence on everything that they've we've asked them, we've got an answer. I mean it's just been amazing. Uh, as far as the funding, who knows what's going to happen in DC, but we're sure hoping. And at least uh, our, our three earmarks are up for grabs. I think I think it's something could happen there. So thank you guys so much and and uh, definitely the condolences to, to you, Lewis and General Herbert. He was a he was a great guy, and we're all going to miss him. If I could, um, just in the interest of making sure we're utilizing you guys to your fullest extent, um, I, the work that's been done on the earmarks has has, has really been great. I know Councilman Allworth and Councilman uh, Spear and, and our engineering department, with PJ and everybody else, have really put in a huge amount of effort on that. But I was just in uh, Treasurer Conan's uh, listening tour last night with Clerk Lee. Is there something your office could help us with in accessing some of that ARPA funding from the state and making sure we get our share of that spent here in our community? Well, Mayor, uh, you know, you've met my son Chris, uh, who's on his way, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, in Illinois. Part of his contract with the company was he could take some time to go hunting. He would probably kick me, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to help you in any way we can, whether it's the federal government, uh, the region, Southern Nevada, or in person. We're happy to do everything we can to help you. Again, Chris would say, Dad, you know, uh, you think you're still you're a member of, uh, of the city council? And usually I'd say, yeah, I am. I feel like I need to help. So please know our whole team will be with you on any of those. Great. I, I think um, I think it would be advantageous for us to reach out and start uh, working with some state officials. And, and if you've got, if you're, the Porter Group has some connections at the state level, uh, we've lost kind of our, our best connection in Kate Marshall. And, and getting getting back in the door, uh, you know, it's, I, I'll, I'll take some blame for that. Kate was so easy to contact that uh, I, I didn't bother reaching out to anybody else. But. Um, now we're kind of up, up the creek without a paddle as far as having anybody in the governor's office I can, or that we can get a hold of as a city. And we uh, communicate frequently uh, because we, you know, there's all roads lead to Washington, which, by the way, is why I ran for Congress. You know, as a city council, I, I did have set with the state, so then I ran for the state yeah, Senate for the state, and that's what I do in Congress. So all those good. things loose around, so yeah, I'm happy to help. Uh, we are on the call. Anything else that anybody would like to add? Okay. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. We'll see you soon, okay? Be safe. Thank you. you too. Uh, we'll move on to item six. Councilman Allworth discussion for possible action. Direct City Police Chief to conduct a traffic study regarding possible future removal of two stop signs that are placed on North Street at the intersection of Ogden and North Street. 
and to provide the results of that traffic study to the city engineer in order for both officials to make recommendations at the city council meeting following completion, pursuant to city code 6 3 2 b I'll make the motion to have that done. Second. I have a motion and a second. You can add in. I just want clarification, council. Are you looking for the traffic?